All right. This week, uh, we are just going to address the elephant in the room. Okay. Uh, it's the qualifier that starts off every kind of conversation or missive from a musician or artist that um, that I've heard in the last four or five months. You know that since we can't be together right now, or since we can't see each other, or I can't get to your neighborhood. Uh, there's been a lot of that, and um, in fact, that was the whole kind of impetus behind this entire series. I, if if I was out there touring right now, I'm not sure there would be an ology. So um, while we're all just a, a little bit sad that we can't be out there touring, uh, it has led to other things that are really, really wonderful. Um, so lemons, uh, lemonade out of lemons. Um, we've been exploring a lot of kind of other subjects that maybe are a little less obvious in terms of how they relate to my, my musical stuff. But um, today we're just going to lean into it. We're just going to go there and talk about touring. Um, I miss it a ton. And I know um, other artists miss it. And I know that uh, people that come to shows miss it. I miss going to shows as, as just a fan. Um, but maybe enough time has passed that we can uh, we can kind of talk about this thing without uh, too much tears. Uh, no no guarantees at all. But um, let's see if I can find my uh, there's my guest. I'm gonna bring her in. She is a singer songwriter, a friend. Made my album of 2019. The question and. Um, I'm not sure she's ever joined anyone's Instagram video, so let's see if this works. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Mark. Great to see you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you and see you. Yep, it's perfect. Oh, it's perfect. oh man. I was just the technology. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning so much about technology that I didn't know I wanted to know. I, I'm not sure we are, want to know it, but it's happening, and, yeah. and we're trying to make the best. <laughs> to make was, the best of it. Last night I watched your um, the one you did with your son. Oh yeah, that was epic. No. <laughs> oh, it made my night. It was so good. <laughs> you were an early adopter. I remember seeing you tuning in and, and asking questions, and I thought, oh my god, I got to get Anna in for something. And then I think this was your idea, this subject, but it was um, it was several weeks ago. It was pretty early in the process, and I I said no, no, we can't, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We have to we have to bravely just just go there. And who who better to do that with um, than someone who I had a gig on the books with that was canceled back in, in May. No, I know. <laughs> ah, we'll make it happen. We'll make yeah. it happen. Do you remember exactly where we met? Did we meet at the Sisters Folk Festival, or have you met before then? I think we did meet at Sisters, and you were there. You were doing, it was right after. Um, this poor song, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe it was right before that. I can't remember. Yeah, and we were teaching at the camp together. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That was that was quite the uh, that was quite the festival. I met a lot yeah. of amazing people there. Yeah. Um, I, I think I had been I had definitely been aware of your music before that through um, probably through Peter Mulvey who will almost certainly come up in any discussion about yeah. touring. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, like, right. Touring, land touring, yeah. Yeah, I think seriously. I found I remember because you were going to be at that festival of teaching at the camp, and I was I had just so randomly. I was like reading a Rolling Stone article and there was a write up in there about your album and I look that's how I found you like I feel like I find every other person through the like musician grapevine but I yeah. legit opened Rolling Stone and found and found that article about your album and I was like oh that sounds really cool that, that sounds like it's up my alley and, and can then we I just sign off now that was a perfect way to I, I know, know. <laughs> how are we gonna top that that's amazing I thought you should know because sometimes that stuff works and sometimes it feels like it disappears into the ether. But yeah, 
Right. Well, I was just letting people know on uh, some of the other platforms that we were going to be going live, and I and I actually s stole a picture from a Rolling Stone article on you to let people know that you're live. So you know, we we both we both have seen a, a little bit of Rolling Stone, <laughs> and probably enough. I, I know I never thought I would be in Rolling Stone. I never thought I would even really get to be a touring artist. I mean, I didn't yeah. know I wanted to. But yeah. it's not something you know, right? Yeah, I was. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because I feel like you've probably done it in so many iterations over the years, like being a side man and, and also like transitioning from from touring on your own schedule to like have being a dad and like how that yeah. changes things. But did you work a bunch oh, yeah. of other jobs before you did music, or was it always kind of music? It was always uh, like kind of a mad drive towards music. I think I, I was I was in grad school for a while, as a lot of people know, for science. Um, and I, I think there was a, a, a couple summers of um, kind of begrudging landscape uh, work. <laughs> but I know I really always wanted to to do this, and I, and I didn't know if I could, but I, I kind of attacked it with the the. Um, the kind of zeal that comes from someone that feels like they have to kind of prove that it's an actual possibility, you know? Yeah. Uh, I remember thinking that, like, well, if I'm 30, uh, if I, it hasn't happened, you know, if I'm not, like, a touring artist by the time I'm 30, then I'll, I'll hang it up. And, and then I got to 30, and I was like, wait, I'm, I just started. <laughs> and then I thought, well, 40... <laughs> you know, then I thought, 40, like, no, surely you won't be touring when you're 40, you know? <laughs> past that so uh what about you did you did you always I mean, when did you know you wanted to to get out there and hit the road or are you like restless by nature or or um have you had to kind of learn learn this and kind of compel yourself to do it yeah, a little bit of both maybe but i didn't i i went to college i was going to be a nurse and i and then that lasted for not long and and I kind of maybe in my like mid 20s started writing songs and I just sort of like played with bands playing fiddle before that and done a little bit of touring so I kind of got a taste right. of like oh that's that's how people work if they're doing music and, and I don't know I yeah same I just had I like waited tables forever and was always like someday I'm gonna wake up and there's gonna be a thing that that I feel so jazzed about, and it's not going to be this thing. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you I, got to tour as a side person first. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. an easy, that's kind of a good on ramp to, to touring. I mean, I, I did it the, the exact opposite way, which is, I guess, a little bit. Um, I guess it's a little bit rarer, relatively speaking. But how great to be able to kind of watch people do what they do and then you, you're kind of collecting data points you know like well I, I like the way that she did that that's amazing or yeah i'm never going to be like him in that situation you know you kind of store it away and oh, take it out when it's time for you to, to do it on your own yeah and you kind of see the i don't there's so many moving parts to touring like what you know how to get your car to work and how how long it takes to get from place to place and where are you going to stay and what's how long do you want to be out on the road and yeah oh. it just it's like nice to see all those things before you have to be the one that wrangles them all you know oh god yeah i i, I can only <laughs> <laughs> i mean but, once I got once I got into sign man work, I was like, wait, you mean I can still <laughs> tour, but other people deal with all the crappiest parts of it, like, and setting everything up, like, ooh, that's that's kind of appealing. <laughs> I better practice guitar. guitar. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. But you just, I mean, you just were like, I wrote all these songs. I just want to go. I'm gonna figure. I'm gonna copy. Well, them. I mean. I think, you know, me I don't know if it's the same for you. Uh, I feel like we're maybe both introverted or introverts. Uh, I, don't, I shouldn't assume that, but I know I am. Um, you know, I, I, I seem very extroverted up to a point, and then it's like, 
I don't want to see anyone anymore for, for yeah. the rest of the evening. Uh -huh. But, um, the, you know, writing songs, it always felt like this, the tree in the forest thing. Like, this, if I write it and nobody hears it, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it mattered to me, but there was this, I just felt compelled to share it with, with other people. Um, not because I felt like I was special, but because I felt like if I did it right and captured what I was trying to capture, that maybe other people would feel the same and I would find the things in, in common with people and we'd feel, you know, kind of less lonely and they feel less lonely and you make them feel the way that you felt when you first listened to the music that you love, you know? Yeah. Is, is that, how, how was it for you? Like, I mean, was it kind of a means to an end sort of thing in that way? Yeah, I mean, it, that's exactly, it's like a drug in that way. I think it, like to be, to be somebody who's a little more introverted and maybe in regular life, you don't quite feel like you're making connections like that all the time that feel really deep and feel really like you share a part of your heart and then someone else that you don't know that well, it shares part of themselves with you and to, I think playing songs for people immediately felt like that because it's so vulnerable and you're, you're not usually that vulnerable with people maybe and, and it immediately felt like oh my god this is really when people come up afterwards and they're like oh mm -hmm. that that reminded me of this this hard thing in my life or this you know this thing that I'm going through and it's I, I just think that felt so different from any other way that you connect with people um, oh absolutely yeah i mean I, this kind of goes back to to something i was asking about earlier which is that like are you restless by nature or is this something that you have to kind of on some level compel yourself to do and, and i know for myself i i would probably be one of those people that would choose if, if all things being the same i would choose to stay in one place and know that place through all the seasons, through all the changing lights, through all the, the days, uh, as, as well as I could possibly know it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the Robert Frosts, the, the biologists, uh, the naturalists that I followed growing up, like that, were, those were the people I really connected with. The, the globe-trotting, um, you know, kind of like itinerant, you know, uh, Troubadour-esque people did not hold as much sway for me. Uh, and even when I started touring, uh, you know, there were other people that had been doing it a few more years than me at that point, uh, like, you know, Peter Mulvey and Alice Paul. And, and it's only normal that, you know, you get lumped in um, uh, with other people that, you know, have, have kind of come, you know, right before you. And, and so I kind of think people thought of me as, as like a, in that same ilk as like an Ellis Paul, like you're, you're just out there all the time. But I, I actually was never out there all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had um, a, a steady girlfriend who's now my wife, like since the ver almost the very start of this. And there was always something that made me want to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, not stop music, but stop the traveling and come home yeah. so I could, you know, see her. Um, so, you know, I, I was never like a road dog in, in, in the way that, say, like, you know, Paul uh, has been. Uh, like, what's the longest you've, you've ever been out? Um, I guess like a, a few months, like two or three months. That's, see, yeah. that's a really long time. It's a long time. I, I don't, <laughs> I feel like you're always, maybe you feel like this too, but you're always... It's like a constant checking in with your heart and your, it's like when you're not on the road, you're, you're like, oh man, I really, I'm craving that feeling and that, and that the work of like being out in the world. And, and then when you're out, out there, you're like, oh man, this might be too much. This, I gotta, yeah. I gotta make a better, this balance isn't working. I, I'm not like, you know, being home from for the relationships that I care about and um, yeah it's such yeah, a yeah that's a that's a part of it right yeah there's never a time when I felt like 
well, I figured it this out. Like, yeah. I figured out, like, the perfect amount of time or, like, <laughs> yeah, it's contextual, to... right? Yeah. I mean, when you're younger, it, it may not matter. I mean, you do, um, I don't want to say a fair amount of touring, but you, you do a not insignificant amount of touring with your partner, Jeffrey, right? Yeah. So that changes the, the, the dynamic in terms of, like, needing to go home and being done with touring, right? Like, I'm sure you both hit your, your limit together, but maybe yeah. it would take a little bit longer if you've got each other out there. Yeah, totally, and it's and it's always like we kind of started just we just sort of like started the journey at the same time, so it's always been a really I think I feel really lucky in that way. Like it's we would sit on the couch next to each other for hours, just like trying to book. You know, we're trying to like book a month out to Colorado and back or something. And, we yeah. haven't played anywhere and we're just like did you email like jeff's pub you know <laughs> no i didn't try that you try it and like what, <laughs> what and just forever and it felt very i think being able to share that and neither one of us was like here i'll take i'll take you under my wing we we're both just like how do you agree with this and uh yeah yeah well that's that's good to have too i mean like it, it's great to have a companion but if the, com the companion i i feel like it takes a really special person to tour and not be a musician like to tour with a musician like jeff gets to share in what i feel is the the best and perhaps maybe the only compellingly great part about being on tour which yeah. is uh you know which is the I'm gonna wait to David Wack for this joint. It's the music, right? Like, it, I I can't for the life of me figure out like if you're not directly involved in the show, either as like a you know support staff, like a you know sound tech or what have you, or a musician. I can't understand why you would want to go on tour. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, maybe one every now and then is like a little kind of adventure, but not as like a way of life. Like the music is to me the the best part, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other stuff is, it can be just kind of a, a stream of indignities, but it's, it's also, you know, it's also wonderful too. I mean, we don't have, we, we should acknowledge the, the, uh, the craziness of it and the, and the downside of it, but it is, um, at the same time, we're, we're very lucky to be able to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, Did Polly go with you sometimes when you guys first got together or like when you were first starting out a little bit uh, not a little bit we've we never really we haven't really done a ton um we did like right before the kids were born i had some stuff out in your neck of the woods in the pacific northwest and we um we stayed out uh at, at my friend terry woodburn's house uh, do you know terry no. yeah so you don't know terry oh man you guys are <laughs> Love each other. He's he's a wonderful Portland uh, music fan, and huh. and um, uh, he he and his wife I think were out of town, and they said you know you can come out early and stay at our house, you know. So we came out early, and we could just spend a week just hanging around Portland and going to the Japanese garden and oh, cooking cool. crabs and stuff. You know, it was great. And then I think we toured down to um, Pickathon uh, oh. with. Uh, Chris Downhorst came out. I was, I was doing some gigs with her, um, and then Polly Polly left, and then Chris and I had a few more things after that. But that was right before the kids were born, and, um, and you know, since then it's it's obviously gotten a lot a lot more uh, complicated. It's it's not just as simple as like jumping in the van, yeah, uh, the minivan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, and it's you know, it's funny. Like I know people like here that have like really rock and roll kids like we i saw david wax just joined uh, yeah. hi david um or maybe it's Suze. i don't know or maybe it's both of you but um you know i'm seeing on their instagram their kids are you know they're they're making vegetables for their kids and like you know motel kitchens like uh -huh. just you know wizards and you know that my kids weren't rock and roll kids they were they needed this, especially my first one needed like structure. He needed consistency, and so it felt like it would have been really, 
yeah. um, selfish to take him on the road just because it was something that, that I wanted to do or that I had to do. So yeah. my whole touring thing is basically, you know, it's the Laurie McKenna model, which is how can we spend the most time making music, the yeah. least time traveling, and how can we get back as soon as possible? <laughs> <laughs> And really, since I've had kids, that's been the way that I that I do it, with the um, occasional exception of like a longer sideman tour where you don't really have any control over how long it is. You know, yeah. if someone calls and says, "Well, we got a five week tour," you know, with Josh Ritter opening for Jason Isbell, you know, do yeah. you want to do it or not? You usually, it's usually all or nothing. Yeah. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like that makes you more? Sometimes I, like, I've done so much long, just like long touring. Even though I know in my heart that that's that's not like the best way for me as a person. But I just, but sometimes I feel like when I can wrangle just going for a shorter amount of time, I'm, I'm so much more grateful and just, like every single show feels really special. And, and you never get to that point where you where you're like full here. Your like introvert self is just filled, and you can't take any more in, kind of. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. That's that's definitely that's one of the the chief benefits of of doing it that way. It's it's finding the sweet spot, right? Like you got to be out uh, and doing you know doing the craft uh, frequently enough so that it you can kind of fall into it, and it's not like you know climbing up a, a hill to get there. Um, yeah. But then, so you can enjoy the the kind of act of making music, but but um, it can be hard to you know sustain that for for long periods of time and to stay healthy and uh, yeah. I mean that that's a whole other part. <laughs> it's yeah. a whole other ology of like how to stay healthy on the road. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you've had times when you were just sick as a dog out there, and it's just it's the worst. Yeah. What can I eat at this gas station that's not going to make things worse? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, those are like the those those are the, the down points, you know. I mean, there's definitely and there's definitely a lot of those, but there's there's great stuff too. Like, do you, do you like driving? Is that like something that you really enjoy to do? Yeah, except for in like giant cities, I love driving. It's like there's something about that forward motion. It's like it's like taking a long walk or something. And your brain just starts working, and it just feels yeah. good. Do you? Well, I I um sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like you know, I, I have this this song where it's a chorus song. My a couple records ago came up, and there's there's the title track. There talks about how like the the road is it's just a means to an end. Like I guess I find it. I guess I don't. I wish I took more solace in like the journey at this point. But yeah. um, like we were saying, it, it really kind of depends on who's in the journey with you. You know. So at this point, I don't really enjoy driving. I I feel like I did have times when I did enjoy it. Um, yeah. I do I do like it because I, I like to listen to music while I drive. Uh, or at least I did, and I used to go. I got a lot of listening done then. Yeah. But these days, I find I just kind of, uh, kind of lull myself to sleep almost with, with music, and I and I need, I need like political podcasts, or better yet, like somebody in the in the uh, passenger seat to kind of deliberately try and make me angry by like taking <laughs> a devil's advocate kind of view. You know? <laughs> like, what do you mean Ted Cruz is nice? You know. <laughs> That gets me going. <laughs> and then you get to the show and you're just angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to like calm down, you know. I mean, I've literally had, I think it was Zach Hickman. Uh, my wife does it too all the time. Like, but I remember Zach, we, we were coming home from this, this barn star gig and I got the whole band in the band, you know. If I fall asleep at the wheel, like it's, that's it, you know. Yeah. And it's a freezing night and all, it's just an hour drive. But like, I'm not great late at night. Uh, I yeah. never have to. And uh, I remember I just didn't feel particularly high uh, energy. And, and uh, this was during the, um, the previous election. And Zach was like, you know, 
he's like, I don't know. I've, some stuff that Ted Cruz has said, like, I, he's, he's not wrong about everything. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> totally, like, we were home before I even knew it, you know. Yeah. And it was a good 10 or 15 minutes before I, 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 regrettably, before I realized, like, oh, you're just trying to stay alive by making me angry enough so that I don't fall asleep behind the wheel. Uh, yeah, I, do you think about, I mean, have you ever fallen asleep behind the wheel? It's a terrifying thing. Only one time I got pretty close and it scared the life out of me. I felt so I yeah. pulled over and was like, "You, that, that cannot, that cannot happen. It's so yeah. scary. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I definitely, like I said, I'm a, I'm a morning person, so I'm just, I'm not great after gigs. And it's also an introvert thing, too, right? Like, you do the gig, you're fine, you're talking to people after the gig, you're fine. And then 20 minutes later, you are not fine. You're yeah. bent, you know? <laughs> and and uh, so there's, you know, there's been times when, um, I there was one time in particular I had a really close call and I just woke up. Uh, and happened to avert it at the last minute. But that was just going from Cambridge to Melrose, where I live now, which at that time I, is like 20 minutes. So it doesn't even have to be a long trip. So, oh, hey, Caitlin's here. Caitlin Candy's here. Hi, Caitlin. Oh, <laughs> Love it. And I should say, too, for everyone that's tuned in, if you got any, um, if you got any questions, I've been trying to monitor them as I go, but if you have questions about touring or the road, um, feel free to uh, to uh, throw them out there and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to weave them in. Um, do you exercise on the road? Is that like something that's um, an important thing for you? Yeah, I've, I've kind of gone through phases, but it's, it seems like, especially on a longer tour, I usually run or, or like take take long walks or I'll use the, you know, sticky, gritty, elliptical at motel wherever and just, <laughs> I've done it, just kind of sweat for a minute. And, like, yeah. oh, La Quinta Inn has a gym. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my gloves. I do, I feel like the way I started out touring and the way I tour now are so fundamentally different, like the intake right. of booze and the just lateness of night has just yeah. completely flip-flopped and I just don't even really drink barely at all now and I try to run or I don't know eat at every Whole Foods I can find and just it just seems like it keeps yeah, like, yeah it feels like there's more options now than um, even when I started out I mean I remember when I began touring, like, Dar Williams published, like, this book called, like, I think it was called, like, The Tofu Toll Booth or something like that, <laughs> about where you can find vegetarian food on the road, because there just yeah. wasn't as much. And now, you know, if you can find a whole food, there also wasn't a smartphone either, so you, you didn't know. You could be in the same town or right around the corner from a place and never know. Yeah. Uh, and now that's that's not so much much an issue. But yeah, definitely Exer exercise. I used to think it was something that I didn't have time for on mm -hmm. tour, that I didn't have energy for. Uh, and it turns out, at least you know, I feel like it gave me, it gives me energy. And yeah. so, I don't know. I guess maybe ten years or so ago, I made a real conscious effort to like, um, you know, try and exercise on tour. And and that at the start, it, it like you know, was running. And um, I remember, I was. Uh, doing a few shows, like a run of shows with Chris Smither. It was maybe four or five shows I was traveling with him. And I remember he said, like, oh, do you do you jog? Like, I, I go I go running. You know, I'd love to you can run with me. I don't run fast, but you can, you can join me. And there we were that morning, <laughs> the next morning, and I'm jogging with Chris and Smither, like my, my musical hero. And I just thought, this is the weirdest thing in the world <laughs> but you know stars are just like us they gotta exercise you know? <laughs> I, that's something i love about touring is when you do get to to like open up for somebody or jump in the in the van with somebody that you really admire and you you just get to it's like everybody has such a different way of of uh existing on 
on tour, but also just in the world, and you get to kind of like enter their universe. And yeah. With whoever their band, or, and it's such a, it's just like very intimate. There's something like really quick friendships form that way, I think, because it's just hours yeah. and hours together, and you're stuck in Yeah, you're in the home. trenches, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, I, I feel a, a deep kinship to people that I maybe have only um, toured with, you know, just f maybe for a few days here and there over the course of 20 years. But there's yeah. something about that way of, of moving through the world where you're, you know, you, there's a there's a freedom and a, and a um, and a kind of beautiful restlessness to it. But there's there's also uh, if you stop to to think about it, which a lot of people don't, uh, there's this like a reminder of or daily reminder uh, or hourly reminder of our fertility <laughs> and just how tenuous things are, you know and and um, it can you can feel really open and exposed and, and vulnerable, and uh, so it's it really is kind of for me like navigating those two extremes. Like how do I thread that needle and just kind of acknowledge both sides of the spectrum, but not have to like wildly swing back and yeah. forth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is really. It's such a it's strikes me all the time. Like what a balancing act it kind of is to just and even like boundaries and stuff I feel like you learn so much about because there's so much gratefulness you like you try so hard to, to book the tour and then you get out there and you get to the shows and you've tried so hard to like let people know and and then if anybody comes you're so grateful and you want to like oh my god if you weren't here I wouldn't be like this wouldn't exist and you and you want each person to feel that you're, it's like anybody that wants to talk, you want to talk and, and there's, there's, but there's also like boundaries and that, that's, that's always like a balancing thing that, that I have struggled with of how to like be there with people and I want them to feel how much I appreciate that, that they're like making the thing happen that, that is like my deepest heart and I don't know, and like wanting to connect with people in a real way that's not just like, yeah, it's really sunny out there. You want to buy a CD or, you yeah. know, like you want to know about their family. If they're going to tell you something personally, you want to like be there with them. And, and But then like knowing knowing how much of that you can do before you shut down and then you're, and then you're not good at being present yeah. anymore. And I, yeah, that, that part's always been a little that must be, uh, and I, I don't want to assume anything, but I, I've toured primarily with, with female artists over the year, and kind of touring while female uh, is a, a whole other <laughs> thing with boundaries. Um, there's things that, that you all have to deal with that, I, that uh, I haven't actually directly witnessed too much of it um, and had to kind of say something a couple times, but um, I, I've heard enough stories where, you know, especially on the boundaries thing, it's like, I, I've gotten that two or three times in 20 years, you know, and I've kind of awkwardly extricated myself from the situation, but I know for some of the artists that I've toured with um, that, are, that are women, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot trickier to navigate the, the boundary thing. And, and I, um, my, my hat is off uh, to you in uh, figuring that whole whole situation out. Um, we have a, a question here that I, I want to address because do you see the questions on your end or is it just me? Um, I cut. They're not. Yeah, not really. They're so small down there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one from from uh, I think this is Dave. Uh, it says, "Does it ever feel like you are in an epic quest, like books you read as a kid?" <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah, where is that damn ring? Is it up on that mountain? <laughs> Did it already fall into the volcano? Yeah, like, oh, God. I mean... I'm always we're... so curious about, like, I feel like we probably have had such different, like, beginning... I'm just so curious about the East Coast world 
and I've toured there a bit now, but I, for so long I started out in my area and everything's just so far apart. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's, you don't, you can't do like a weekend tour and hit four different places right. if you don't want to do nine hour drives. And it's, but it, I think that's made touring longer, but it, I always talk to folks that have been in the East Coast world and it's just such a, there's so many places you can get to and so many like old staple folk clubs and Right, and yeah, yeah, real pivotal kind of music scenes. I mean, it, it, we are spoiled in that um, regard, and I think in um, kind of to pay, uh, you know, kind of a little bit of penance for, for how seemingly convenient it is, uh, we just have to constantly tour through one giant megalopolis that totally. stretches from Boston to like DC, yeah. and it's a complete pain in the ass, you know? And there's never any notion of being between places. Like this is one of the things that that I really love about the American West is that I know that it's it's uh, the same thing out there. There's no like not necessarily space between counties unless it's like a national park or something. But you can get the sense that you're really between places out, out west. Whereas on the East Coast, it's like once you've left some place, you're already in another yeah. town. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like how right in the gonna, middle of it. How am I going to park in this place? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just figured it out like two two hours ago, and now I have to figure it out all again. Yeah. Here's one about um, that's that's an interesting one because I think this is this was um this was a big concern of mine starting out. Like, uh, what about songwriting on tour? Have you written songs on the road? Do you have strategies for for getting writing done while traveling? Um, yeah, right. Do you you've written you you must have written on the road. Yeah, I do. It's it just totally depends on if I'm with anybody. I never do, but like touring solo, there's I love I love shitty motels and having like an extra night and you you get some Chinese food and just like wander in your mind and uh, that and I think like driving too. I write a lot in the car. Yeah. But only yeah, by the, myself, yeah. The, the challenge there is to just not write. Uh, I mean, they say to write what you know, but of course, if you're always driving around, then you just all yeah. you do is write about like being on the road, being, how hard the road, you know, like yeah, every song can't be turned the page, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I, I've definitely, I've definitely had times in, in, in my career and my work where I struggle with that, like, like no, I, not an, I, you can't have another road song. Or if you do have a road <laughs> song, you have to come at it from from a new, some kind of different angle. You know, um, yeah. for me, one of the the best ways to uh, write while I'm traveling is is actually on a plane, mm. because in general, uh, people I, I'm not one of those people that invites uh, conversations on the plane. Certainly, not. For the foreseeable future is that <laughs> they're gonna happen again but um i i like to kind of go inward maybe put headphones on even though i don't have anything on them and um take my notebook out and write on the plane there's there's no distraction you can't like check your phone or the internet um nobody's texting you or calling you and also you don't have your instrument there so mm -hmm. You know, for me, it, it makes me think more melodically, and it makes me think um, maybe outside the, 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 the framework of patterns that I've kind of maybe fallen into uh, realizing it when I have like a guitar in my hands, like this is how I go from this chord to that chord, or, you know? So I'll be on a plane and like, I'll write something. Do you do like uh, really quiet voice memos on, if you have like, a, or you go to the plane bathroom and just because you want to remember the melody <laughs> I have done I have done quiet voice memos once uh, or twice yeah um, never never gone to the bathroom to record, <laughs> uh, for sure but you know it's it tends to lead to more durable melodies um, because you have to remember them you know or sometimes yeah. I'll write like the numbers for the chords now like some kind of mm. kind of national you know number chart kind of quick little sketch to remind myself of it. 
Uh, but I, I've written just a lot of very different kinds of songs that way. I wrote By Degrees on a, on a plane, you know, and I've written like Western swing songs on a plane, like with all these different chords that I had to like go back once I landed and like, like find out like what was that chord that I was hearing <laughs> in my head, you know? Yeah. So for me, planes are, planes are big. I, I've also, you know, gotten the, the, the notebook out on the steering wheel. I, I will, uh, I will not lie. Um, yeah. You know, distracted driving maybe before there was even cell phone uh, yeah. distraction. But, you know, to get that phrase down. And in some ways, actually, just having the phone is, is a lot quicker and safer. I can I can pick it up, open voice recorder, and just, like, say the phrase that I need to remember into it. And then it just lives there until I can deal with it, as opposed to, like, yeah. long, longhand. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Pull over at a rest stop next time you see one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're not always there, right? I mean, um, let me let me ask you this. This is, I mean, we should have probably gotten gotten this out of the way with this, and, and I could talk all day, but we we only have an hour, and I usually go a little less than that for sure. But, um, like best gig ever, best or best tour, like what? Doesn't have to be about the music, even. Like, is there one that sticks out, or do they kind of all have things to to kind of? go for themselves i don't know i always have such a bad memory for for specifics like that but i think it's like this my favorite tours are always this magical mixture of of like severe aloneness and like really beautiful human experiences where there's like long drives in the desert or something and you're and it's just like stark landscape and your mind kind of goes wild or you do a lot of writing because you're really alone but then at the shows you just have s some really intense human experiences where somebody for some reason just like really needs to talk or or invites you over for dinner or whatever they want to show you their like workshop where they build tiny boats models or you just like the crazy things that people <laughs> were like wow people are so layered and they're just, or you can because because there's so many strangers on tour you you kind of like snap judge people a lot because you mm -hmm. need to like but then i feel like so often people just blow your mind and they are nothing like what you initially like initially thought they were and Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't. I can't yeah, like that's. That. Well, that's that's so that's something to navigate uh, for sure. And the the other thing that I'm thinking of is like a lot of my a lot of my best um, you know a lot of my best tours or best gigs were uh, as side man as a side man because you know I didn't I it required very little of me to get there and it was just like amazing music and bigger yeah. rooms and. Uh, I might play on my own, um, but for my own stuff, like I've had, you've probably had this experience too, where like it's hard to talk about what's the best or, or the worst tour or what's what's good and what's bad because they oftentimes come so inextricably linked uh, yeah. in the course of the same experience. I can remember, you know, you're talking about driving through the desert. One of the most beautiful drives in the world, and I don't I don't know the exact highway, but is um, the route from um, uh, Santa Fe to Durango, yeah, from Mexico oh, through Colorado, and it's like Georgia O'Keeffe country, like literally. I think yeah. that's kind of where she was painting. Red painted hills. Yeah. yeah, just stunning, just stunning. And I remember just having like a, it was like a psychedelic ex experience. You know, everything is just this feast for the eyes, especially for a kid from you know, the well-manicured lawns of, of the Boston <laughs> suburbs. And uh, so I had this just amazing, you know, kind of drive to the next gig. I think I was playing a house concert in um, in Durango. And so I came into to Durango all just high off this drive and just so, so pumped. And could not find a restaurant that was open in Durango for some reason. I don't know why. And I felt like, well... Maybe they'll have some food at this house concert I'm doing. Um, 
And then uh, the last concert, that's a whole other conversation, but um, I know. <laughs> wonderful people, <laughs> wonderful people, but they, um, they were kind of, they like lived, enjoyed living off the land, like they were foragers. And so, uh -huh. you know, there was, no, I was like, maybe they'll have like a burger or just something. I, I just didn't <laughs> have a lot of food all day. I was just starving. And they had this like spread of like, um, these dried, shriveled up brown mushrooms, and I don't, I'm not like a big mushroom guy, and I didn't want that. And then they had this like, this lemonade, lemonade made from um, like pine needles, that oh, was like, yeah. I mean, amazing stuff. Ama amazing. I'm, I've, I've grown up a little bit since then, and I, and I'm not quite as hungry, and I, I, I can appreciate what was going on there now in retrospect, but I just remember feeling like, I'm. I've driven all day through this amazing territory and now I'm exhausted and hungry and all there is is like pine needle lemonade <laughs> and like seven people at this house concert and I just feel famished and alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what weird universe have I just stumbled upon? <laughs> yeah, it's it's the it's a yin and yang, you know? And and I should say that like I mean, God forbid any from that anyone from that house concert is watching, but uh, it's it's ne I've never really gone to a gig and ha had it been like bad people. I mean, there might be a, a, a person here or there that that uh, made things difficult, but for the most part, like maybe there are socially awkward people. But you know, I'm socially awkward plenty <laughs> of times. Like, uh, but there's there. It, there's always people that were willing to kind of help pick you up and they knew that you were on the road on your own away from your family away from your friends your community and they kind of take you in and yeah. it's this beautiful it's this beautiful exchange and you you know you would give anything to them that night during that show and you, and you do and you try um and uh it's this beautiful exchange and i don't know if it's it feels like a kind of uniquely American way of, of doing it. I'm sure they, they do it in other countries, and maybe 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 it feels different. I don't know, or, or the same, but just maybe the scale is what makes it feel so different here in America because it's just so vast. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful thing, and I, and I I'm I'm proud of us that neither of us has just like wept thus far at the, the prospect of talking about touring because it is this it is a beautiful thing i mean set aside the whole like it's it's basically the only method by which we or the primary method by which we make money as artists anymore is, is touring um it's just this beautiful artistic cultural exchange and to not be able to do it uh is just it's heartbreaking and um and this has helped me just kind of connect with people that i used to tour you know i would have toured with i get to at least see them for i, I always tell people it's like oh it'd be like 20 or 30 minutes and then it's never 20 or 30 minutes <laughs> because we get talking and we miss each other and we get yeah. we get into it um but uh do you have you know just as we finish up here do you have do you have stuff on the books that you feel like you know, you might have a, a, a shot at doing, or is it kind of just clean slate until we, we figure this whole thing out? It's pretty clean. I don't, yeah, it's it's such a big unknown. And I, the, I was in Europe with Jeffrey and I were sharing a tour in March, and we... I remember seeing that. And we just sort of, we played like three out of 30 shows, and just, it became apparent so fast that we're like, oh man, yeah. this is not this is not good, we can't ask people to gather, we gotta get home. But it, but our booker there immediately rebooked the whole tour for September. Yeah. And he's like, you should, you should promote it, you know, and, and I think both of us were like, oh, I don't know, that seems like, I, I wish that was gonna happen, but it's, and we, we did, we like posted it, and then a couple months later, it was like, oh yeah, that's totally not, that's, yeah. that was, we're not even allowed in at this point. Yeah. You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. It feels. Uh, it, I have. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's a real 
tough time for everybody in so many ways and it really I, I always feel a lot of gratefulness for touring but it this is an extra like stepping all the way out of it really makes me feel like man what a job to get to do and I was on Craigslist last night looking for like little waiting tables gigs and like random it's like oh maybe I can delivery drive for a little bit or something and, and like mm. I used to do that all the time just look on Craigslist for jobs and walk around with my resume and and it really it made me I had such a welling like I have, can't believe I've gotten to do this for this is like the opposite of any job I've ever had and so yeah it makes me really excited for it to come back and, absolutely i know it's a it is a gift and um and man may we all get back to it uh what it is when it is safe and um it, it will be i i think we're probably kind of i don't think everyone's going to be able to get back to it i'm sure there's going to be great artists who for whatever reason um can't just can't sustain through this, you know, and that to me is just heartbreaking. And there's going to be venues that there already have been venues. That yeah. This, um, so it's going to be there'll be some parts of it that I think look very different, uh, at least for for a while. Um, but there will be a joy um, and just a I think a beautiful communion with people. Yeah. Uh, Renewed. It, yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't, and I don't. Uh, I think it'll be a while before I complain about a long drive uh, ever again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well, it's so great to see you and and, you and to have you do this. And thanks for suggesting this. This was it was great to just. I think we were. I had said, well, we can't do tourology because we're not touring. We should talk about travel. And then the yeah. closer it got to this, I thought, no, let's just talk about it. <laughs> There. And I can't think of anyone else I'd rather do it with than you. So thank you I've, for it. Uh, I've been loving these so much. I it's like therapy or something. I watch I watch everyone you do, and I'm like, oh yeah, that that person or that topic, and it just yeah, it feels good. Well, it to, gives me great pleasure to be yeah. provide some kind of service in that in that respect. Um, yeah. Well, you don't have to watch this one because you already did it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, until next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Mark. Good to see you. You too. Give my best to Jeffrey if you would. I will. All I right. Take care. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.